Mad. He's an absolute saint. <laughs> Yes, in the driving seat, it's the suave, sophisticated star of the classic 70s series, Return of the Saint. And with him, the documentary maker who has met both saints and sinners in his quest to bring us the best stories from around the globe. It's only Ian Ogilvie. And Lewis Rowe. <laughs> Seat. There we are. So you you were just driving in, so you didn't realise that we've actually given out some halos um, already this evening. <laughs> um, but we've got a special one for you. You do. There. You, you can't see it, but it's behind you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're wearing it beautifully, as you can see. I'm, um, I'm very grateful. And for that. Um, we might we might leave that on for the whole show. We we probably won't. Okay. I think somebody's honest. arm is going to get a bit sore yes, if we leave it on for the whole right. show. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you came in the original car. It is the original, yes. From Return of the Saints. Yes. And obviously you've had problems with it this afternoon. Well, I have my friend Mike who discovered it up to its axles in a barn in the Shetland Islands right. and has done a complete restoration on it. Apparently he just told me he drove it too fast here from Wales and he's done something terrible to it, so it's now no longer working. But yeah. it will work again. We well, thank goodness we have got a brilliant yeah. special effects team uh, here on The One Show. And you would never have, t you would never have known. Never no. have known. Uh, here it is. So it all looks good so far, and um, there we are. Well done, team. Oh, bless them. <laughs> and you were a fan, Louis, weren't you, of Back the Back in the day, yeah. oh, my word, can I just say, uh, it's quite exciting for me to be sitting well. next to this man right here. My 70s childhood dream has been fulfilled. <laughs> well. Yes, of course, now you're going to tell me that you were about three, weren't you? Five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brilliant. OK, well, we've got a call. Yes. Uh, now, Ian, let's talk about your book, your memoirs. My memoir. Once a Saint. Yeah. Um, now, you took over, didn't you, from, from Roger Moore? Yes. Um, as the wonderful Simon Templar. So how did this... How did it come about? How did you get the part, then? Well, um, one day, my agent called me and he said, a, a man called Bob Baker wants to have lunch with you. So this was in the early 1970s. Right. So I went and he said, um, I produced The Saint, I did produce The Saint with Roger Moore, it's been off the air for a long time. And he said, I, I think you'd make a good one, which was very nice of him. Right. Where had he seen you, then? Well, his wife had seen me, apparently, in Upstairs, Downstairs. But she ah. fancied you, basically. I think so. I, well, the, the character I played in Upstairs, Downstairs was a very weak, weedy little asexual <laughs> character, and I thought, well, how on earth would she make a connection between that character and the same? The answer, of course, is because I looked a little bit like Roger Moore. And that's why I think I got the part. And then years later, I'd forgotten all about it, and my agent rang in the late 70s and said, oh, that Saint thing's come back. So I never did an audition. <laughs> I just walked straight thing. into it. It was, couldn't have been easier. Brilliant. Really. Well, let's have a look at you in full Saint mode. OK. Here you are. Oh, please, don't Yes, thank you. Mr... Um... Templar. Simon Templar. We've enjoyed watching clips, oh. haven't we, this, this afternoon. <laughs> but wonderful. Are you quite surprised, Ian, at how attitudes have changed a lot since then, though? Because, I mean, it's just full of girls in bikinis and feather boas draped all over you, the inter which must have been Sorry, wonderful. Attitudes have changed? What? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with girls in bikinis well, draped nothing. all over you? But, I mean, you couldn't do No, that, you're right. You're you? absolutely right. You're, you're quite right. It has changed completely. And for the better, I think, probably, really. Do you? Maybe it's a little less fun now, a little drier, a little greyer, mm. but uh, I do mm. think that in those days an awful lot of feelings were very bruised and very hurt, and uh, I think it's, it's yeah. good that we've stopped it a bit, yeah.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we saw you having a bit of fun with the reunion with the car and what have you, but you must... I mean, there must have been so many pros and cons, of course, to play in, to play in the Saints. Yes. Well, the pros were... You, you, instantly you became a household name, but that's not necessarily a good thing. I mean, you mm. could get a good table in a crowded restaurant. That was about it, really. I mean, there's not much else. The I mean, you two are very famous and you probably made lots of money out of it, but I didn't make any money at all. Uh, it was really? very poorly paid, yes. There were no foreign sales, there were no residuals. The last money I saw from the Saint was in 1979. Right. So it made you very famous, but yeah. not very rich. Well, your agent must have been rubbish, because they didn't negotiate well, that very well, then. Well, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> or either that, or maybe I was just too keen to take the part, and they went, well, we've got a sucker here. All we'll of us pretend you're not it, but, that keen, yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but that was the sad thing about it, you know. I just, I, it, it, was, it was difficult being very famous, but not having very much money, you know. Mm. Was it difficult then for you to move on from there, do you think, as well, as yeah, a con? Yeah, it was a bit. I mean, uh, for a while I didn't really work on English television because they said, you're the saint. I mean, the mm. difference between the English and the Americans, where I've been living for the last 26 years, is if they, if they make you famous, they reckon you're worth money. So then they'll put you in something else and they'll exploit you, and that's very nice. But in England at that time, or maybe still to this day, I don't know, at that time... I hate that word typecasting because it doesn't really mean anything, but it, it, mm. it meant that they would say, we can't use you, you're the same. And that really yeah. was, was, was sad. So, you know, I didn't do a lot of work after that. But there's um, lots of sorry. other stories in the book. You know, mm. you did lots of other theatre work, lots of other television work. Mm. But Matt and I were really confused because on the cover is this. Oh, what yeah. are you doing here then, Ian? That's me. Yes. That's me in a play. Here's the thing what, about the cover of an autobiography. <laughs> Go on. They always look the same, don't they? They've got a black and white photograph of the person looking glamorous, right? And I said to my publisher, I kind of want a photograph that people are going to go, what the hell is that? Well, we did. Oh, yeah. You know, and you know, you know, you on, 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 yeah, on a table with lots of other autobiographies, I want mine to be the one that they pick up. Yeah, well, yeah. So well, that's what I'm hoping that Definitely will do. I don't know if it's going to Brilliant. Right. Well, Ian's memoir, Once a Saint, is out tomorrow. Okay.